everyone. Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to an ep another episode of the UK Connection. It's Saturday, and I've got alongside me, in addition to my tasty beverage here, I've got Mr. Simon Bray from Lancashire and Mr. Stephen Reed from Perth in Scotland. Wow, look at that. I'm bringing out the big guns today, guys. See that? I got my shit together. I got my shit. I, I noticed the other day, Peter, that uh, you mentioned Poughkeepsie and you like stirred down the barrel of the camera and went, Poughkeepsie. And I thought, you know, who I, was, you know who I was staring at, my friend, right? That's aimed at me, isn't it? I want to make sure you're watching. <laughs> I'm going to do that every time now. <laughs> so good. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a, we've got a pretty fun topic today. Uh, we'll announce the topic briefly and then we'll get into the, uh, the beverage choices of the day. So this was uh, actually Simon's idea. Uh, this is basically an a, a all episode about live shows that we've seen where when you talk about it, the person you're talking to goes, you've seen who? Oh, so that's what we're doing. So these are non, Simon always puts it really well. Uh, the, non esoteric well, how do you usually talk about like uh i'm um, just non slt friendly friendly that's what that's what i was looking for oh so, yeah yeah so non -SOT switch, friendly. switch off now if you're expecting metal or prog or anything like that oh switch off switching off entirely you're not going to get any of that <laughs> yeah. so we'll each be we'll, we'll be going honest. round and round talking about some shows that we've seen that uh, may not really fall into what we talk about generally here all the time but before we do that no we don't talk about the weather on this particular show uh steven what do you got uh what do you got to drink during this episode today well i have well it's a little bit when i don't know if i'll pick it up okay so what color would we say this is Dark. Dark. Okay. Because <laughs> I have. Or amber. Oh, I don't know. Is it amber? amber. Yeah. The reason I ask is because. Oh, red. Okay. There you go. It's red. And it doesn't really look as red as I would expect something that is this boldly red. And I did the. I will not say purple for anyone. I, I just did. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so I've chosen, I've chosen a sky red. I was in the Isle of Arran last week. I'm on the Isle of Skye this week with a red, which is, uh, is majoring on malt, nuttiness and fruit. With just the right amount of hops, our first ever ale and an award winner too. So yes, this is the first time that I have had this. And I have to say, this is really good. Oh, this yeah. is really, really good, yeah. I had one little sip before we came on. Man, oh man, I'm going to be buying this again. This is absolutely top-notch stuff. Really hoppy. It has got those kind of fruit flavours. It's got that, and bear with me here, you can all go, oh, he's talking rubbish. We all do anyway. Um, it's got that kind of egginess for something that's really hoppy. Does anyone else understand what I mean by that? It's kind of yolky. There's a little bit of a yolk kind of flavour to it. Yeah, you, you lost me there, but I yeah, I don't know. But that's, that's fair enough. It sounds that's good. I, I like a good red ale, and I, I agree with you though. Most of them don't look too red to me, but I don't care. So as, as long as they taste yeah. good, I don't care what color they are. That's outstanding. That's, that that's really, really good. good. Really good. Really good. Simon, how about you? On the on the untapped app, um, Stephen, it's described as multi smooth, sweet, fruity, and light. It doesn't mention eggy at all. Does it not? It doesn't. Oh, I feel, uh, my is it, it's is, one of the options for later. Is it like Wiki made up here so I can go on and edit that and actually add what it tastes like? Yeah, yeah you certainly can, yeah. I yeah, see yeah, these yeah. experts, they know nothing. <laughs> they know not. Well, mo mostly it's people like you and me that actually add that shit, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Any we definitely know nothing then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, anyhow, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went across the border into deepest, darkest Yorkshire. Went to... Hebden Bridge and um, a few scoops and um, I went into the uh, night jar uh, fire a few scoops and um, I, I looked in the was, uh, I don't know what that is you want to explain <laughs> oh okay sorry right. there you go <laughs> I had some drinks and I um, I looked into the it looked into the fridge and uh, my eye alighted upon this now this amused the living shit out of me. This is <laughs> half cam, half biscuit. Wow. 
Yes, <laughs> wow! And, you, know, and you got to show that again. Hold on a second, that is awesome. <laughs> so that is a biscotti vanilla cake stout. Holy, that's probably yep. like ten percent, right? ABV. Um, eight point six point eight. So it's, oh, it's that's really low. Wow, six point eight. That's that's drinkable for me. Anything yeah, over that, yeah. I'm like forget about. That, that sounds. However, yeah, I, I'm. I, I'd like to think that Stephen's laughing at the name. Am I right? Yeah, well, I'm actually going to ask you, what brewery is actually making a play on Half Man, Half Biscuit? That's it, the name of a band, Peter. It, it actually is Nightjar. Uh, what, a, uh, what a great band as well. Uh, big big fan of their work. They've got a new album out tomorrow. Um, oh, okay. Which, uh, which doesn't come out on vinyl to do why. And we can all blame Adele oh, for that. All yeah. Adele and Ed Sheeran, whoever he is, we can blame him for that. Um, but... Um, you know, some, sometimes people say, I'm loving the parochial nature of some of the shit that we say. And um, some of their greatest hits from the past are, are of course, the Len Ganley stands, a song about a snooker referee. <laughs> you know it makes sense. Or um, <laughs> fucking Alex Fred Titmus, about a cricketer. <laughs> now, now, Peter, now that you understand cricket, you, you, you'll be looking that one up, I'm confident. Um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, it is a lovely, lovely drink, really is. It's very nice, very smooth. Mm. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it because I would be really disappointed if that didn't live yeah. up to my expectations. Very I, so. I have to get myself some of that. I'm, I'm totally sold. I'm, totally. I'm completely intrigued. And, it, and, you know, it looks like something I've seen here, but obviously I don't I don't think that's the case. I suspect not. Yeah. No. I think it's, <laughs> we have these... Worth- cake stout imperial things here like all this you know uh milk uh, what they what they call the milkshake stouts and all these things i find most of them though are way too strong and or too sweet so i'm usually disappointed by them but that looks really good yeah. and i think peter and time to get your education for it, i think it was brewed in mydemroid mydemroid okay, yes <laughs> That's going very, very, very close to what no, normal people would call Sowerby Bridge or Sowerby Bridge, as they call it in Yorkshire. Okay, no. I know roughly where you are now. Yeah, there you go. So, mm-hmm. uh, and this is this Peter to carry on the cricket theme is my Lancashire County Cricket Club uh, plastic piece of shit glass. But so, nice, no, it works for that. No, no, I know you're a fan because I haven't forgot you've got your homework coming up at the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is true we'll get to that all right so uh i have and it's unopened a bottle of Hofbrau original great great german lager as you can see so what we're gonna do do you hear that mm-hmm. yes The suspense. Oh, look at that. Lovely, huh? I'm sure there's going to be people telling me I did not do that correctly, but that's okay. A little bit ahead is all right. But yeah, this is a, uh, a wonderful beer. I've, I've just been drinking so many like German and Dutch beers in, of recent months that uh, I haven't had this in a while and I like this quite a bit. So yeah, so cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Master Beers. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Ah, good choice. All right. So speaking of choice, uh, so once again, we're going to be talking about some shows that we've seen over the last 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. Well, not 50, uh, where might, it might be a little surprising that we've seen these shows. So uh, I will have, uh, since it was Simon's idea, I will have him kick us off with his first You Saw Who selection. Well, that's what you think is going to happen. But let me explain the rationale behind this situation. Um, I, I, I apologize for practically nothing of this shit. Uh, I, I, will, I will watch virtually anything. If, if it's music related, I'll, I'll, I, you know, if it's there, I'll watch it. I'll watch it, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I do have some standards, as I'm about to explain. But um, yeah, I, if I like it, I like it. And I'm unapologetic about it. I'm going to uh, probably come up with some really deeply embarrassing names very shortly. However, I've always been quite good um, particularly in the past, of avoiding stuff I don't want to see. So, for instance, hey, Mrs. Simon, it's your birthday. Would you and your friend like to go and see eh, Simply Red? I've bought you the tickets because I'm not going. 
Or would you would you and your friend like to go and see the talent vacuum that is Ronan Keating? Because eh, I don't. So I, I went through that kind of phase. But as, as we've got older, it's been a little bit more difficult, you know, when your friends say, do you want to go and see this? Do you want to go and see that? Because kind of like, you kind of got to go just to get away from the kids occasionally. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> now, I would say before I tell you my first question, I've managed to avoid top loader more than once. I hate yeah, top loader. Which is a good move. Dancing in the Moonlight, World's Worst Song. I've been in and around the venue and managed to avoid them twice. And I think that might be my greatest achievement. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, on to artists that I've seen that, what the heck? Yeah. Um, I have seen Michael Buble. Because I couldn't avoid Mrs. Simon's 40th birthday, could I? And I have Michael seen- Michael Buble? Well, <laughs> I do not like the work of Michael Buble. I do not know. However, I would say um, his, in, his bits in between the songs were probably the most entertaining thing I've seen by anybody that wasn't called D. Snyder. You know, he, he didn't tell people not to get up or you know to get up or anything like that. But very entertaining in between songs, Re and really, really sweary. Yeah. Really? think oh he's like the most middle of the road man in the history of mankind but no super sweary yes oh, um, however i am music was absolute dog shit this really <laughs> didn't do really didn't do it for me so uh but i'm prepared to say i have seen michael Bublé. okay okay first <laughs> fellas because i can do worse <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah well i put mine in chronologically as well i so I've, I've gone through the years of things where people will go, oh, what? So I'm going all the way back to the 9th of April in 1991, okay? And live at the network in Edinburgh, I don't even remember what that was, for the princely sum of five pounds and 40 pence, of which I paid none, because this is my brother's ticket and he didn't go. And my brother's friend said, well, what am I going to do now? And I said, well, you can take me. And I went to see Ned's Atomic Dustbin. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a million years. Holy cow. <laughs> kill! Because that was their only song, was Kill Your Television, you know? Um, and do you know what? It was quite good fun. It was just a kind of big, glorified club show. I think there was another three or four bands that were on before them. The Doughboys springs to mind as probably being maybe one of them. And then Ned's was Ned's. There you go, look at that, was the main act. And they were actually on kind of permanent rotation in my house. Not necessarily through me, but through the wall, where my bedroom <laughs> backed on my brother's. I heard... Din -din 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 I don't know how many times, because it's in the song of it 72 times, and it, he would just literally lift the needle and put it back. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> I actually think it was just a 12 inch that had like one version on one side and a longer version on the other side as 12 inch singles happened to do. So yeah, so my first one is Ned's Atomic Dustbin. And a few years ago, I was sent a compilation for review, listened to it and went, wow, that's remarkably average. Isn't that remarkably average? And I remember having quite a good night here, but I was young, so you just did, didn't you? <laughs> when you're 18, any night out's a good night out. <laughs> that's all the kind of did you play for? Oh, I think there was probably four finish? bands on the bill because they only did 45 minutes or so. Oh, wow. Do you know? They so, filled 45 minutes. <laughs> Well, yeah, they probably played the extended version of the 12. The trouble my brother backstage just left in the needle and putting it back again, and that's why I got his ticket. <laughs> recover, this is a recover songs. They played the hit twice, and then maybe another one. <laughs> yeah, this is a theme. A, yeah, there's a lot of these ones that I've been to, not necessarily because I bought the ticket. It's a theme. <laughs> there you go. All right, my first choice here, um, and I will say these were all, all of mine were, were pretty good to, to very enjoyable. It's just if I were to tell, and I'm going to tell uh, people that I went to these, they'd be kind of like a little surprised, right? So the first one, 
Um, let's see. Uh, I don't want to, the actual first one chronologically speaking, I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but the first one was uh, at Madison Square Garden, Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2002. I took Mrs. Pardo to go see Luis Miguel. And I will have to go. Who? Nice. <laughs> he is a very, very popular. Oh, it's, a, uh, it's a guy. That's a stop. Okay. Yes. <laughs> a very, very popular um, Latino crooner, for lack of a better term. Okay. Yeah. And he uh, he's dated uh, he dated Mariah Carey for a while, and he's been in some high profile relationships. But yeah, he is he's the guy who's got all the strings in the background, and you know, he sings in Spanish, and uh, it's just all very romantic you know, type of stuff. And uh, among, so you could just imagine me amongst 20,000 people at Madison Square Garden, uh, sticking out like a sore thumb, obviously, but it was actually very good. He's very good, very talented. Uh, he's got great songs. And I know a lot of his material quite well because my wife obviously is very much into his music. So yeah, but you know, most people, if I would say, I went to see Luis Miguel, just like you guys, they'd be like, who is that now, right? But yeah, but he's a guy who would play a place like that and sell it out, right? So, okay, see that everybody's gonna be like, "Holy cow!" I never <laughs> <did that." laughs> this feels like a step beyond guilty pleasures now. I think. <laughs> I just looked him up, and I am astonished to know that he's younger than me. Yeah, yeah, his hair is, but. Uh, He's, he's, he's about 50 now, right? I think something like that. 51, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm all completely unfamiliar with his work. Would this be like vaguely embarrassing to see him or, you know, you yourself, would it be vaguely embarrassing for you to see him? Because, you know, or is it just strange and weird? Which... It's strange, it is strange and weird. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, I, you know, women love this guy. Love him. Okay. Did you see what you, did you see with Simon? 51. If they want, he's an old man then. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I joke about my age all the time, so I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, he's older, he's older than me, so he must be old. <laughs> you're, you're an absolute fetus, aren't you? So, you know. <laughs> Mentally, yes. <laughs> <sighs> all right, Simon, back to you. Hey. Simon the Incredible. I'm working my way up to the really embarrassing shit. I have seen the Human League twice. Oh, when once isn't enough. <laughs> it, really, it really isn't. No. Once we actually, uh, with friends, went to see the Human League at Manchester Apollo. Who'd have thought 12 years ago they were big enough to play the Apollo still? Really? In December this year, they played the arena. Wow. Yeah, I know. Um, however, I will say, thoroughly enjoyed them, because as you know, I'm a huge fan of uh, pop music. Thoroughly enjoyed them. You know, so much talent in the vocal range of all of them. Um, and then I saw them again about two or three years ago, just before the pandemic in an 80s festival, more of which in forthcoming weeks. Um, and again, they were great. Thoroughly enjoyed them. Really, really enjoyed them. Um, really like um, Together in Electric Dreams, which is not a human league song, which means that you've got to wait to the end because that's the last song. Ah, okay, see, that's clever then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They, they want to make sure you stay throughout all the rest of the crap, right? Because uh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, last time Journey came to the UK, initially, they didn't play Don't, Don't Start Believing last. Don't stop. Don't start believing. Don't stop <laughs> believing last. <laughs> Oh, that's, from now on, that has to be the name of that song. <laughs> wow, it's only 6.8%. <laughs> yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the Human League and make no bones about it. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, can, I mean, I can go with that. And the reason that I can go with that is because on the 14th of November in 1993, and anyone that did watch the In the Prog Seat Guilty Pleasures will not be surprised to know that I went to see TTD, Terns Trent Derby. Okay, and I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Terns Trent Derby. This was not one where the ticket was bought by somebody else, so I managed to inveigle myself into a concert for nothing. I bought this one. And the standard of musicianship on show was just off the charts. 
and it was just a phenomenal gig. But as I did also mention on In The Prog Seat, it provided one of the cringiest moments that I can ever remember. Because in a quite a quiet Glasgow Barrowland, as things were just, you know, getting a bit emotional, and Terry's sitting at the piano and he's just composing himself. Somebody shouted out, we love you, Terry! To which he paused and looked and leant into the microphone and went, thank you. <laughs> and there was just no irony in that whatsoever it was he just you know I'll soak up your love because I deserve it and it was just oh wow so cringeworthy and unfortunately it is my abiding memory of what otherwise was a really tremendous gig it was really really good and I, I will stand by TTD even though he's now Sanandra Matria uh, as a talented guy with a great voice and a good songwriter who also did some other things musically that were a bit daring and different and kind of half ruined his career along the way for musical endeavour. So I'll stand by that too. So yeah, ETD is my second one. Terrence Trent, that be. Well, you know, you're lucky the person in the audience could have shouted out, play Freebird, dude. <laughs> Grendel! <laughs> <laughs> So you like that. <laughs> all right. My next one, uh, I'm going to jump around all over the place uh, as far as uh, the years and stuff. So this was uh, November 10th, 2011. So a little over a decade ago. And this was an interesting one for me because it's not like I don't like the band or the music they were playing, but it, I felt like really like out of place. Uh, so I went to see at Madison Square Garden once again, and I actually saw them at Bethel Woods. I saw them twice on this tour. I went to go see Further, which is basically the surviving members of the Grateful Dead and a bunch of their friends, right? This whole big tour, Bob Weir and company. And I, I've never, you know, I've always been kind of like a very casual Grateful Dead fan. And, but I, I never saw the Grateful Dead back in the day live because I was always kind of like, you know, I wasn't really that much into them back then. You know, Mr. Joe Metalhead, right? For Grateful Dead, ah, forget that. But I've grown to appreciate their music. But I always thought that, you know, a Grateful Dead concert is for deadheads. Yeah, hard rock, metal, prog, Pete, eh, probably not a good fit. But I decided to go and they were great. But I, I felt really weird because I'm looking all around me and all the deadheads are just totally like spacing out and dancing and doing all this thing. And I'm just sitting there like, all right, I can't headbang. I can't do that. I can't play air guitar. And like everything I normally would do, I'm kind of, so I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to sit here real quiet and enjoy the show and just watch everybody because that's almost as entertaining as the actual performance. And I, the band was great. Like I said, I went to see them twice on the tour because I enjoyed it so much. But yeah, I... Uh, that was kind of a weird one for me. And again, most hard rock and metal heads, usually if they like the dead, they don't really boast about it too much. And I don't actually, I don't know too many, you know, metal heads who like the Grateful Dead. Most of them are like, oh, the dead got terrible. And I know a lot of prog rock fans who don't like the dead. So, to, you know, this was kind of like a strange thing for me, but I'm glad I went because it's something that I could say that I did, right? Even though it's not officially the dead, it's enough of the ones that are left to say, all right, whether you call it further or dead and company or whatever, uh, close enough. But yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of a weird one. But yeah, most people don't, they're, you know, I went to see further and they're like, you went to see who? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Grateful awesome. Dead guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, re oh, really? Oh, how was that? It's like, it was good. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, did they make more or less sense on the second time you saw them? Uh, well, they played like completely different songs. So, uh, okay. it, it all, it, honestly, it was very enjoyable because I know a lot of the music fairly well, but. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, the dead, I mean, they, they play, they'll take one song and it, all of a sudden it'll be like 23 minutes long. And by the time the song is over, you're like, what was that again? Right. So, you know, <laughs> I, I would recognize things here and there throughout the set. But for the most part, I was just kind of like I was just going with it. And I'm like, all right, this is enjoyable. Um, but, you know, you look around you and everybody's like oh, just totally like it's just weird. It's a, it's a totally different experience than anything I've ever done in my life. Like I said, I mean, you, you said it perfectly. It's like, you know, I, you're used to going to a show and you're singing, you're pumping the fist in the air, you're playing air guitar, the heads. And I'm like, you can't do that at a dead show. You just, people just do totally different things. And it's like a little foreign to me, but the band was great. 
the band was great and I, you know, I could appreciate it. So, but that was definitely, definitely a different experience for me. Definitely. Back to Simon. Hey, I, I realized that I'm not like coming up with dates like you crazy kids, am I? <laughs> That's because you don't have one of these. Oh, it's made its appearance again. <laughs> it's always mine over there. I, I plundered mine for, for the tickets. So, so. But it is, they're just over there going, why am I not getting to be seen? Oh, bless. Oh. Do you know, they, they, they're beginning to want their own billing on the show, so I've kind of rested them for a week. Are they um, are they getting a little bit like above the station? Are they? Yeah, absolutely. They keep getting the off the show. Is that, yeah. is that yeah. what it is? That's exactly what it is. They go out of, you know, on, on, in the prog seat this week. Where were we? So. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been doing other shows without them? <laughs> uh, do you know, I was really padding there because I was going to say, well, I'm, you know, something to some. Oh, yeah. On July the 1st, 2011, I went to Delamere Forest in Cheshire. No, mm. forest. forest, an actual forest. And was this for a concert? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. For God and Stephen, I don't know what you're implying. <laughs> Red, going for the Renaissance Festival or something. Oh, Delamere Forest, you know, swords and It swords. was to, no, no, less cool than that even. It was to see Erasure. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they were fucking great. Wow. My wow. God, they have got a shitload of hits. They don't look at me like that, Stephen. I said I, I, I absolutely 100% what, stand what, what by this. Like this thing? <laughs> I mean, when, I'm not having this. <laughs> they, they were fantastic. It was just like hits after hits after hits after hits. You know, and you think, wow, how many hits have they had? They were great. And he's a fantastic singer. It has to be said. I really, really. have to say, if you were to ask me right now and say, can you name two hits from Erasure? I wouldn't have any clue oh well i you know in the well in the uk they've had absolutely a monumental amount of hits. i probably have heard the songs before but right now i'm like drawing a complete blank it's like all, all i'm thinking erasure I'm, yeah i'm trying to sing things in my head to try and get to a chorus so i can name a song i could sing you, you but i could sing you i could make noises that kind of go along those lines but i couldn't name you any other songs sometimes little respect sometimes. yeah okay yeah Turns out, Stephen, you can't sing them. You're correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. See, but there was a little regret, though, so that's fine. There you go. Um, anyway, they, they were really, really good. Um, it probably helped that we had a colossal amount to drink beforehand, but uh, yeah. most most of us had a really good time. Uh, boy, the boy, the elder, who I'm sure will appear in the comments down below at some point. Um, um, we were, we were, we, you know, we got to the point where we were kind of like almost rocking to Erasure. And um, our, our, fr uh, our friend, um, he, he, he's got, I don't like it. I don't like it. There's a reason why he was doing that. I don't like it. Miserable so and so. But we had a fantastic time. And I thoroughly <laughs> recommend both Forests and Synth Pop duos. So was it just in a forest, or is it actually a venue in the forest? Venue, the, the, the pre-pandemic, there used to be quite a few um, uh, gigs in forests in, in, in England. So yeah, um, I drew the line and said, said no to Will Young. This, this guy, this reminds me of the conversation we had a couple of weeks ago with that that venue what you saw Elton John at, right by the by the the water, and it's like, wow, you've been to some interesting place. We don't have anything like that here. Oh, I'm, I'm Peter. I'm not convinced these shows are real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask that grumpy guy because that's the guy. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Making, saying, yeah. making shit up. No, I'm not. Yeah. I promise you. I'm so, but I'm, I'm so ancient, right? Stephen, we, uh, uh, the night after we, they were on, the Corti, Cortinas were on? Corti. Oh, the, the, the Cort. Cortinis, Cortinis, Cortinas. I just don't, I just don't know. And like, <laughs> they must be like ancient and well past it and not hip and happening now. But I thought, who, who on earth are they? Now, I'm, I've come to see a band about that last time they hit twenty years ago. But who are the Cortinis? Yeah. So, mm, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, my next one is a genuine band. I mean, they're they're definitely real. 
And that was the problem. The problem is that they're real. So this was one of those, you know you're in trouble when one of your mates says, there's a band that I really like, but nobody else will come and see them with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's questions and please, pleading like that that makes me see things like the wonder stuff. <gasps> okay, because I really dislike the wonder stuff. I mean, any band that has a massive hit called Size of a Cow, okay. And I mean, the lead singer, I mean, he is rhyming slang for a reason, okay. And his name is Miles Hunt. We'll just leave that there, okay. Um, and this was a one of their many Reformation shows that, that they did because well, I think in reality, they don't like each other but they can only play places bigger than my shoe if they use that name. Um, so they go out, they grump, they don't like each other. Miles gets a sore throat 40 minutes into the gig and goes, we'll have to stop now, guys. And they went off. That like Ash to Earth? Pardon? Like Ash to Earth did? Yes. Yes. Wow. wow. A thing like, we do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. But the the the, the difference was at Ice Death, everyone on the stage was kind of going. Oh. The wonder stuff. The band were not in agreement. <laughs> the names of any of the guys, the, the people who were standing doing this and things, no idea who they're what they're called because Miles Hunt is the star, and he clearly he was a grump and he moaned and he just didn't want to be there. So he seemed to develop a sore throat as the gig didn't really even progress. And 40 minutes in, I was quite happy we got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so that was on, this is on the Idiot Maneuvers Tour 1994, which says an awful lot. And even the chap that I was with, who's still a really good friend of mine, now refuses to give Mr Hunt any of his money whatsoever, because I think something very similar happened at a small show just a couple of years later, when he just he got out to do the show and basically went, <laughs> can't be asked for this, let's go do nothing. Mm -hmm. This was on the 24th of March, 1994, I kind of almost just about saw the wonder stuff. I was quite pleased that I didn't really. So your buddy didn't give him three strikes. He, he said after two, that's it. I'm done. I said, oh yeah. He, I mean, he def I mean, he's Miles Hunt is known for it anyway. He's up. I mean, the band now I think will officially not work with the guy. Hmm. So the wonder stuff are officially no more because they just will. Not that I'm a great historian on the wonder stuff. So somebody can maybe tell me different if, if they care enough down below. Um, the name yeah, doesn't that, ring a bell with me, the wonder stuff. Um, I, I I can't imagine they travelled far out. They maybe played some stuff in Europe, but I couldn't imagine them going over massively in the US. I just can't see that as a thing. They were one of those, they felt a very English band. They were remarkably up themselves. Really didn't like the wonder stuff. And yeah, I've still seen them. <laughs> there you go. It happens, right? It happens. Yep. All right, so I'm going to go back to... Uh, Halloween, October 31st, 2001. So most people who have been following Sea of Tranquility and listen to me babble on about all sorts of things over the years uh, know that I'm not a big fan of like new metal and rap metal and stuff like that. But because, you know, trying to be a good papa, I took my son to go see... There's actually two shows. They were like a month apart. So I'm just going to talk about all of them, both of them here. But the one was on Halloween. It was a Slipknot and Stained at the uh, Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey. And then like a month later, it was System of a Down and uh, Link Lincoln Park. Oh, you see the first band of both of those bills. Yeah, okay. The second one of both of those bills. Oh, oh no, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> And I think Static X were on one of these bills too, and I don't remember which one. Okay. And I, you know, as you can imagine, it was mostly young kids because he was, this was, uh, God, he was like 12 at the time or whatever. And my wife was even questioning that I should be taking him to this. And I actually took him to see Ozfest that summer as well. So in the span of a couple months, I took him to Ozfest and both of these shows. And then I took him, I think, to... Uh, um, uh, tantric and seven dust all in the span of like six months and then be, by the time all that was done he's like yeah i'm not crazy about this metal stuff anymore and i'm like you just did all that <laughs> <laughs> he grew but, up like the rest of us have yeah i know what happened to that <laughs> yeah. 
but I remember like, I remember like, uh, uh, stained was again, that singer, man, he just was up there just whining and whining and the music was depressing and no fun. Slipknot actually put on a really good show. I've seen them a couple of times and Slipknot were just crazy as you would imagine. Uh, you know, Lincoln park at the time were really big. And, you know, they got the one or two catchy songs. The rest of it is just like this bubblegum rap rock stuff, which I can't stand at all. Uh, and I thought System of a Down were good live, but that's just not really my cup of tea. And I thought that uh, Static X were, I could tolerate them for a couple tracks, but for like a 45, 50 minute set, I was kind of like, eh, that's enough of that. But, uh, but yeah, I don't, you know, I, I, I was happy to take them because I know it meant a lot to them at the time. But now all these years later, we talk about it. He goes, yeah, I remember you took me to see all that stuff. Yeah, I got out of that pretty quickly. I'm like, yeah, now, now I will forever be able to tell these stories about that's right. I went to see a couple of new metal shows in a couple of months because this stuff was all the rage with kids at the time, man. It's like he would yeah. come home like, I heard this band. I remember the first time he, uh, we, we, we went on vacation somewhere. I think we went up to Boston and we were in, because of course we're in Boston. I got to stop in a record store. So I bring the both of them into a record store. And what does he do? He goes right to the metal section. He pulls out that first Slipknot album and he goes, I, I heard these guys at school. They're great. And my wife and I looked at each other. We looked at, we're like, whoa, really? Because we never thought that in the middle. He's like, he's like, yeah, I want to get this. And look, are you sure? And yeah. Then we get, get back and he's playing it. And we're like, what do we get ourselves into here? He's really listening to this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. But uh, <clears throat> yeah. So there you have it. Back to Simon. I have a new metal story, but I'm holding it for one of the actual years. Mm, okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I'm holding it for two because the support act will be in the not very good category. When we get around to <laughs> <I'm that>. sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, indeed. Anyhow, um, the next couple I'm going to mention. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm even going to bypass the fact that I have seen Culture Club. Wow, I know. Stop it, Stephen. Because they're going to make a mention uh, in an actual year. Um, I have recently seen, and I have said this off air to you, Stephen, and Peter went, mm. I, have, I have recently, recently, within the last three or four months, seen Steps. Mm. Yeah. Don't look at me like that, Stephen. Yeah, Steps. Mm. Yeah. And they were great. I love pop music. They were great. It was a fantastic show. So much talent in, in at least one member of the band. Um, yeah. Thank yourself, lucky Peter. Thank okay. yourself, lucky. All right, cool. In some sort of way, Simon, I'm sure they're wonderful. Yeah, not thrilling. Thrill. I was thoroughly entertained. Thoroughly, thoroughly entertained. That's all that matters. Yeah, great, great show. Um, you know, some fairly ropey singing, to be brutally honest. Some equally ropey dancing. Although, uh, Claire, she can, she can genuinely sing, Stephen. I 100% promise you that she's actually a really excellent singer. And, which um, one is that? Excuse me, Gordon. Which one is that? The oh, I need to be tactful. The um, larger one. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, she's an excellent, excellent singer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, weirdly enough, and this is getting real. real Steve, uh, Peter's going, what? Uh, Sophie Ellis Baxter was in support. Really Just singing over the top of a CD. And that wasn't really at all. Yeah, there was no band. There was absolutely no band. So the no Steps band. have a band? Sorry? The Steps have a band? Nope. They were probably no. singing over the top. But they did have shitloads of dancers and about 40 million costume changes. And um, if I, if um, H, if H said <laughs> once, he said it 15,000 times. <laughs> yeah. Gets quite annoying after a while, but you know there were so many um, day glow be, uh, be bopper things on oh, Billy boppers, Billy boppers. That's the phrase I'm there. <laughs> Seriously, some, somebody made an absolute killing that night. It really, yeah, hey, yeah, I enjoyed it. You, you know, and that was actually me saying to Mrs. Sam, I think we should go to step, and she went, okay, and then she booked it. And there we were. That was your suggestion. Oh yeah, I love pop music. I love it. 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 Yeah, I I like some pop music. But this is steps. <laughs> 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 
Oh, wow. Okay. Well, my, my list I just froze for a second there. So, <laughs> say, is he frozen? Holy cow. Yeah. You held that pretty good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely stand by that choice. Okay, mine are all step element. Actually, no, I, maybe maybe one. Maybe one can possibly top that in a kind of way, but we'll get there eventually. I'm looking forward okay, to it. So my next one, I've also spoken about him a couple of times on the channel, okay? Um, and he, he is a legend, an absolute legend. He also had the most rock and roll entrance onto a stage that I've ever seen. And he also managed to entice the most amount of boobage onto the big screens that I've seen at any concert by anybody. Any woman who got some close-up from the stage camera on them immediately for the camera. And I'm, and I'm a Lionel Richie gig, you know? <laughs> really? Is this not all kind of, you know, demure housewives and things like that? But evidently at Lionel Richie, they'll do anything at the drop of a note, do you know? And that's just the kind of gig that it was. So we're in April 2007, the 2nd of April here, Lionel only sends out fancy tickets with his picture on them. And I have proof of that because we also went to see him a couple of years later and he still sends out fancy tickets with pictures of him. You know, so 2009 for that one, also in April, not quite two years apart, a couple of days, he must have been busy, something like that. Man, oh man, he was utterly, outstandingly fantastic. The guy can sing. He has got so much charisma, it's unreal. And at the first show, he did, I remember when I went to see Metallica the first time, which would be on the Black Tour, and they did that thing where they were filmed below stage to get the audience go, oh, look, 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 they're really here. I mean, we've all paid, you know, there's a stage in the round in the middle, we know they're here, but they're all here, right? No, no, line up the camera, actually, I mean, the cameraman did that fancy walk backwards thing. So they followed him from the dressing room as the place went apeshit. And, I mean, you saw the cameraman back up the stairs, and then Lionel was really there. I mean, he actually had turned up for his own show. It was utterly, wow. outstandingly that amazing. something you else. Know? Absolutely. Do you know? But I must admit that by the time he got on stage, I mean, Frenzy does not cover it. It does not cover it. And the guy, I mean, when you're operating at that level, the standard of musicianship that you can, you know, afford to bring with you means that what's happening on stage is just beyond reproach. But it was so much fun. He brings the party. He danced on the ceiling. You know, I mean, they even reproduced the, whoa, the least celebratory whoop in any style of music whatsoever at the start of Dancing on the Ceiling. If you don't believe me, go watch the video for Lionel has his green sweater on and he's given it all of this. And somebody goes, whoo. Uh, how did that? I mean, it's stuff like that, you know? I mean, back in the day when Judas Priest were rattling cutlery and drawers and things like that to make all these sound effects, and some producer somewhere, I don't know who did the album, actually let woo go through as a celebration of how exciting Lionel Rich's party was. But anyway, live, the guy's utterly outstanding, and I will defend that for as long as it goes. Excellent. The more Lionel Richie, man, I'll tell you. Nothing at all. When he was coming on backwards, were everybody not going, Goldberg... Goldberg. <laughs> no? <clears throat> no. Uh, so if not. Chris Allen's watching, no. he's loving that reference. He's like, yes, <laughs> wrestling finally comes up. And see you tranquilly. <laughs> <sighs> no. no. I'm disappointed. Uh, no. <laughs> All right, my, my next one is interesting because... It's only a kind of you saw who here it's you saw there type of thing. I actually saw a concert at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. Here's the kicker though. This is like probably 2004. Here's the kicker though. I have the ticket stub still, but it doesn't say who the hell played on it. And I can't remember for the life of me who played. There were like four acts that whole day. I remember thinking, all right, I hate country music. This like sucks. And this was, and you know, this was like, so this was almost 20 years ago. So this was like old style country, right? This is like traditional Nashville country, a little different than what you get today. And I remember thinking, I'm like, well, you know, unless Dolly Parton or like Charlie Daniels band comes on, I'm going to be like not loving this. And I was not loving it. <laughs> but it's, it was a, it's a really cool theater, really cool theater. And uh, there were a lot of older folks there. 
And I was there on a I was in Tennessee on a business trip. So I was, it was just something to do. And they're like, oh, we're gonna go to the Grand Ole Opry tonight. Like, yeah, great. So me and all my coworkers and we're sitting down and I'm like, yeah, two hours of this, you know, it's like, yeah. So that was uh that was something else. But I will always, you know, it's it's a very prestigious place. So I guess in the memory banks, it's something yep. to say you've done. But you know, whenever it's come up in conversations, like, oh cool, who'd you see? Uh couldn't tell. I, I wonder if there's a way to look it up, right? I probably could, because I, I know the dates and everything like that. I probably could look it up. But they have like concerts there like every day, don't they? So it's like, I don't know. It's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people go to Nashville all the time. All the time. All the damn time. All the damn time, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all the damn time. I think it adds a mis mystique that you don't actually know who it was. I guess, I guess. I mean, do you guys hear about the Grand Ole Opry in your neck of the woods? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah, it's like I mean, a worldwide thing. I mean, most people know about that. I'm assuming. I guess I shouldn't assume, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest names in the country have really got to go through the, the rite of passage, don't they? Yeah. To go, to, you know, they the, got the Grand Ole Opry. So yes, thoroughly aware. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Me? Yes. Have we still got loads left, kids? I got one left. Oh, I've still got quite a lot left. Okay. I can, I, well, I just remembered. Just remembered that, um, and this was a free ticket. This was uh, this was not just a free ticket, but a free bar. There you go. Even better. I have never been as drunk in my life <laughs> as when I <laughs> had the opportunity to see Enrique Iglesias, supported Amen. by Demi Lovato. Check you can I tell you she she can really sing okay not, not a huge fan of the material necess necessarily but by god that voice filled the arena but by god don't remember anything about enrique <laughs> i know that i i know that i have witnessed him but the free bar took some real hammer <laughs> No doubt, you yeah. have to do something, right? You really, yeah, really should, really shouldn't let your uncle Simon loose on a free book. No, no, <laughs> no. Do you remember I was ill when I went to meet Wolf and yes. shy and back up here? And I, I don't know why I was ill that night, but I do know why I was ill after I saw Enrique and Demi Lovato. And it's my own fault, and it's not big, and it's not clever, kids. Cool. Don't do it. No. Do you have to, you have to stop yeah. the car on the way home or anything like that? Or oh, we had we had a we had a taxi. And did the, did the taxi yes. driver like you at the end of it? Not really. <laughs> Not really at all. No. no. Let's move on, shall we? If you like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it segues nicely into something that I mentioned after we'd finished recording one of the gig shows. Which the fascinating insight in it for a show that I've not actually pulled out for this, but when I was asked to go and see the big dish, another one of those, the guy I was going with isn't going to go. Do you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, it's a band. It's a good night out. Let's go and see that. That is the only concert in my entire life I've had a drink at. That's the only one because it was a free night and he was driving. So I had a drink and I only had two, two ciders or whatever it was at that one. Because I'm, so up myself that I'm there for the band. I ain't going to miss any songs. I don't want to be drunk. I don't want to have to go for a pee. I don't want any of that. So I just, I just don't drink at gigs. People, I, I, but I only, I only drink on YouTube. <laughs> but there you go. So my next one is one of those where, and this will kind of give you an idea of the kind of, kind of artists we're talking about here, is that somebody bought these tickets for my mum. Okay. But she didn't know this because it was a gift. So she'd already bought tickets to go and see in the print stuff, but you probably can't read it. But Barbara Dixon, okay, does that name mean anything to anybody? Barbara Dixon? I, yes. I know yeah. her so well. Oh, hey, get in there. Look at that. The big chest hit with the lane page. Mm. But she did, I think, with either herself or some randomer on stage. And this literally was, there's two tickets to you and your other half. Do you, do you want to go? It was a free night out. Yeah, we'll go. It really wasn't very far away. So we went along. Man, oh man, she can sing. It's not the most exciting gig I've ever been at because it is pretty straight-laced stuff. But she is a local lass. She's from Dunfermline, which is only about 40 miles away from me. 
So she's, you know, not that demure. <laughs> but that was really good. But that was one of those definitely when I say, you know, with all the stuff that I've seen over the years, people say, you've seen Barbara Dixon? But yeah, I'm I'm cheap. I won't turn down free, free tickets for anything, me. So yeah, I've seen Barbara Dixon. I've seen songs from Chess and various other shows that I would never have dreamt of you've ever heard in live. It was free. So it was free. So there I was. I was at Barbara Dixon. What's it next? What would it be next to in your uh, in your little book of fun? You know, you got Barbara Dixon, Metallica, or you know, it's... I can. You know, whilst whilst Peter's talking, I'll go and have a look. I'm I'll pay attention it. to Peter. You just have a little look. Okay, back in a second. I've never opened the Peter. Set him off on a mission. On there you go. Paper. He's like, yes, cool. <laughs> I can still hear you. I, I talk about. <laughs> he's not here. All right, my uh, final choice for today is actually not a music event at all. Um, mm. And it, it's funny because at the time we were pretty excited to go. And now, like all these years later, we're like, why don't we waste our money on that, that, that guy? Uh, my wife and I went to see Caesar Milan at the Palace Theater in Albany, New York. So Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, he was doing like, oh, yes. oh yeah. yeah, he's on YouTube, isn't he? Yes, he's on YouTube. He's on Animal Planet, and or, or yeah. used to be. I don't know if he still is. Anyway, he was he was huge at the time on the TV with the TV show, and everybody thought he the guy was like such a genius, right? So he was doing this like like speaking tour here in the states. So it was like March of 2011. So we got tickets to go to the show, and we went. And you know, he's up there, and he's got you know one or two of his dogs. He's telling all these stories about how he got started uh, training dogs and all this kind of stuff. And you know, we thought it was we enjoyed ourselves. But then, like, in the ensuing years, I mean, my wife has become a dog trainer uh, since then. And now whenever we bring up his name, she, we're always like, yeah, that's Caesar Milan. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, right? He just, <laughs> everything, everything that he hoodwinked the audiences on, he doesn't know anything about dog training. So uh, it's just interesting how our, our opinions of him have changed over the years. But that was, I think, the first time I had ever gone to see something like that, where it's kind of like a celebrity doing a talking thing. Uh, now everybody's doing it. Bruce Dickinson's doing it now. You got you know, all these, you know, rock stars are doing these kind of like uh, spoken word events and, and, and all sorts of other people and stuff like you know, Mike Tyson, the boxer, did something like this as well. So, but yeah, it was it was interesting. But um, you know, now looking back on it, it's like, eh, you know, what was the point of that? But again, I think this was it was ten, about ten years ago, a little over ten years ago, and I think she was already having uh, thoughts of, you know becoming a dog trainer and going to school and all that sort of thing. So we watched him quite a bit because he was really the only celebrity, you know, animal trainer out there. So uh, it was kind of a big deal, but yeah, that, that's my final pick of the day. Let me see you. Barbara Dixon. Yeah. Barbara, I, I am nothing if not one dimensional. Okay. Because the, the, the show before Barbara Dixon on the 20th of December, 2007, was your favourite band, Simon, because you'll, you'll even listen to the offshoots and all of the solo stuff that's quite uh, profane. So it was the Wild Hearts. Wild Hearts. <laughs> you are you. You really are you. Fantastic. And then the gig after that, okay, which is completely different, absolutely completely different, because it says on the ticket, in brackets, after his name, it says... Wild Hearts in brackets because it was a ginger solo show. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, right? Just in case you're wondering. And they won't pop up in, in, a, in a subsequent show because that's actually the worst support band I've ever seen. Because I am convinced that the guitarist was just, I have no idea what they were called. They were a local band. So it's, I'm quite pleased I don't know their name because why kick guys that were just out trying to do what they were going to do? But nobody had introduced the guitarist to the band. Nobody. Absolutely. He was playing completely different songs. And every solo was, <laughs> and they were just going, nah, 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 and it was just shit. But Ginger Welltart was great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the ones who were either side of Barbara Dixon. There you go. Obviously, who else? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, but the Wild Hearts are actually doing the thing in front of Blackpool Tower this summer. Oh, don't put your money on it. But they are supposed to be doing the thing. Yes, yeah, because I think the last. Or oh, five, six, seven shows that they've done, they have announced a couple of days beforehand that actually no. yeah, they're having terrible difficulties still. So, yeah, not going to work. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
And the one at Bonfest in Kerrymuir, where Bon Scott came from, uh, they pulled two days before, and I think it would have folded the festival, so the festival didn't do refunds. Wow. Not not a nice situation. I feel for the guys organising the festival, because you put a name like that on, I'm sure it wasn't cheap. Mm. So no, then you sell tickets on the back of that. Okay. Anyway. Moving on. Yes. I have seen recently, and you, Stephen, you personally slagged this individual off just the other week. I have recently seen yeah. Michael Bolton. Wow. He's still he's, torn, he's, huh? Jeez. He's, he's still breathing. Absolutely looks like a corpse. <laughs> Seriously, he really, really does. But, you know what? Really, really spilled oh, on. <laughs> Again, he, he came on whole. He came on playing a guitar. Did he? For, for the first few numbers, he, he played it. He, he played an played an acoustic guitar. I'm sure it was to keep him stood upright. He, 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 the voice was excellent. The voice was really, really good. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought right. Does he still have the short I, hair or did he grow his hair back again? I know. It, it's, it's, it's pretty short. Um, yeah. Um, I thought, you know, I really can't stand most of his material. However, I, no, I, I'm, I'm going. I want him to do Steel Boys and um, How Can We Be Lovers. I want him to do those, right? And I didn't pay much else attention to what, I, what the name of the tour or anything like that. But I discovered um, partway during the um, support act, who was X Factor's Rebecca Ferguson, who managed to do one and a bit songs before. Stop it. Uh, who managed to do one and a bit songs before the uh, PA packed up. Now, I've been to many gigs before and I knew that the PA was going to pack up. I could tell. I said, I said this, is, this isn't going to finish, and it didn't. But anyway, miraculously, it started working in time for Michael to come on. And anyway, my, co my cousin checked herself in on Facebook uh, to say that she was there. So the day after, I texted her and uh, said, you know, how, do you, how, how did you find Michael Bolts? And she said, she said, I quite liked it. And I, I said, you know, why, why so many covers? You know, I really could have done without the covers. I, want, you know, I wanted something from Everybody's Crazy or something like that. She went, firstly, what the fuck's that? And second, secondly, it's the greatest hits to it, you think, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have paid attention to that, didn't it? Because all, all his, most of his hits in this country are just shit covers of Bee Gees and stuff like that, aren't they? Benny King, because, you know what? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, oh, right, I'm like, holy cow! What the hell happened? Looking more lifelike, though, than he did wow. in Black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean... That's I'm I'm wary of saying too much after my, you know, brush with meatloaf. Yeah. That's quite that's quite frightening. That's quite it barely looks like him. Yeah, it barely looks like him. Wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, I will I will qualify the Michael Bolton comment and say that yeah, that those first two albums, they they're the real deal. They're the real deal. They're great. That if you like a bit of AOR melodic rock, they're they're the real deal. And I mean, let's, let's let's be truthful here. The guy has always had an amazing voice. I, I always thought, you know, if he didn't, you know, he could have been a great just rock singer if he really wanted to. Yeah. He wasn't the stuff that Blackjack. Yeah, yeah, it's good yeah, stuff. Serious rock yeah. singer, absolutely. Yeah. However, what he did instead earned him an absolute fortune and took him a worldwide fame. So who who might he made a shitload of money, so I'm sure he's not regretting his career in one bit. But absolutely you know, he but what he did made people like San Diego see him. Yeah. Who's the multimillionaire who's sat here um when it's pissing down outside talking about Michael Bolton on Zoom. We are <laughs> who's yeah. got the priority straight eh? Michael? Mm? It's yeah. us. Yeah. Somebody That's commented fine. under the status quo show checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> That. Oh, dear. how many more have you got, Simon? Because I've got, a, I've got a few. I've got one. Uh, I've got one story I want to tell about a not complete non-entity of a band, and then I've got a seven-hour story about a, a band who I inadvertently saw. So two, basically. Right. So two. I've got, I've got one, two, three. I've got five. I've Why not go three quickly? Yeah. And listen to you guys. Okay. So three quickly. Okay, so this I'm not embarrassed by this one in the slightest. This was a great gig, but for people in the UK, I went to see Marseille. <gasps> I've seen them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this was a reunion show uh, at the G2 Garage, not particularly 
particularly well attended because Marseille were never a name. On the 1st of October, oh, there's the, the years now, oh, 2010 was the tour. And Marseille are best known here in the UK for a guy called Neil Buchanan, who is famous, and I mean famous, and he also sold the franchise for a lot of money for being the front of Art Attack, which was a kid's art show. One of those shows where you see this guy wandering about like a paint pot and the camera's way above and he's doing this thing and you think, that's just slapping paint about. What is he doing? This is like the shit that supported Kiss, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And then the camera pulls back and he's made this ginormous mural of something that's utterly beautiful. And he was an absolute superstar, but he was in the band Marseille, who were just a really good melodic rock band. Prior to that, then he had fame and fortune and decided, you know what, I'm going to take that back out on the road. And if you'll pardon my language, fuck me, they were good. <laughs> they were absolutely brilliant. And he was really, what a great guitarist. That, that was absolutely fantastic. Deserved an awful lot more people to be there. Um, from there, I'm going to go to 2000. <laughs> Do you know when I, when I said we should do things that we've missed? I missed yeah. mentioning them pre previously because I saw them with Tyson Dog uh, in sport at the Heart to Tarler in Tottingham, which is is a Tottington, which is a pub, and the stage was smaller than this table that I'm sat at now. Um, but they were really good. But did you know that semi recently? Um, I mean, he, he bogged off and left, didn't he? I say again for the fi final two. They actually tried to tour as Marseille with no original members. Now, that's fine, I suppose, if you're like Molly Hatcher or Lynyrd Skynyrd or something like that. But for a band that have precisely no hits, yeah, and you you know the person that was going to go to Darwin to watch them, don't you? And you're looking at him. I was gutted when, it, in a massive surprise, it never happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that that time, that time in Barry in Tottington, they were really, really, really super good. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were brilliant when I saw them. But that that might actually be the same tour, 2010 and around there. Yeah, they were thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were really good because we went along. I, I, I like the album. I mean, I, I, I genuinely like the band. Mm. Um, but it was one of those. Yeah, we've got to go and see that. We've got this will never happen again. And we were right. I like the album that he's not on. Touch the night. That's a fantastic album. And he yes. walked, He wouldn't. He would not play. Any of that shit. Although no, they, did they did completely rework one of the one of the hits from that. Uh, same tune, different words. And they yeah, did play it that. Would, it out. would appear that he was a little bit of a diva, I think. Really? I think so. That, give it up for us, slagging off 65-year-old guys. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet Riot last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at anyway. least Neil's still with us. Yeah. Yeah. Moving along, I will quickly mention that on the 13th of June in 2013, I went to see, and you'll come up later on, but we'll mention who the headliner was, I went to see Neil Young at the Exhibition Centre in Glasgow. I won't mention Neil too much in this one because he'll come up later on, but the support band were one of those bands that made you go, <sighs> <laughs> do you know, do I really need to see Lost Lobos? The Lost Lobos. The Lost Lobos, open oh. for Neil Young. Do you know they were brilliant? They were absolutely brilliant. They played a whole set of things that I'd never heard before, and it made me realise that they were just not a bad cover of La Bamba. Do you know, they did, they, I mean, they did play that because I think they'd have been bottled if they hadn't. But they were one of those ones where you got to the end of it and you kind of looked at each other and went, well, I really liked that. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, bloody hell. They were really good, really good. Uh, well, from the album, pardon? Or a wacky bill. Wacky bill? A strange bill. Interesting bill. Oh, yes. Sorry, I thought, who the hell's wacky bill? Yeah, that's well, that's what we thought. But when they played, you actually thought, well, actually, this kind of makes sense. They, they, were, they came across as really legitimate, which I had not anticipated. Apologies to any hardcore Los Lobos fans who happen to be watching and are going, legitimate? Of course they are. Actually, they were. I mean, I haven't gone in and investigated the catalogue. They were good, but they weren't. Let's buy all the Lost Lobos albums, good. Uh, yeah. But uh, when, when expectation levels are kind of through the floor, when you realise that actually, man, oh man, they can really play, that was that was a win. That's a total win. Being yeah, pleasantly me. surprised is a good thing. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So from there, I'll go from big venue, big band, number one hit across the world, to with the exclamation mark and the K, Chaos Theory, 
Okay, so that, that this really is a who. And to us, it was a who as well. This was the man that we're headlining, plus guests. Okay, so they're from the hotbed of all things rock and metal. They're from Glen Rothis. Okay. I mean, people from Glen Rothis have not heard of Glen Rothis. Okay, um, as as a, let's not get too colloquial about it. In Scotland, it's what we call a new town. Okay, so back in the day when they were trying to kind of get people to move around and different work in different places, they built new towns, and Glen Rothis was one of those. And literally, you can drive through Glen Rothis and not realise you've done it. But that was actually the way that it's designed. All the main roads kind of go through bits that you have to come off and you think, well, actually, I'm in, I'm in the middle of, middle of town here. How did that happen? So here's a supermarket. Huh? I was on the Joe <laughs> Carriageway six seconds ago. It's very strange, but bizarrely effective. Anyway, the point being that we went to see a band called, yeah, there's a point, Simon, sorry, that, that we went to see a band called Vantage Point, who I really like, okay, Vantage Point, the kind of, they used to do really kind of new wave of British heavy metal kind of stuff. They've got a great singer, they're a local band. I like to back local outfits uh, and they are one of the ones that are worth shouting about, I think. They have diversified their sound in recent times, had a bit of keyboard, really good. They were, I think, third on a bill of six. And what we discovered was that other bands were all school children, really, you know? And it was all, it was a night of metalcore with the band that we wanted to see in the middle of it. <laughs> and by the time that Chaos Theory, exclamation mark, came out. What we discovered was actually the worst band were the one that had put it all together. And they did actually genuinely have a UK tour that I have no idea how much money they lost on because there was nobody there. Nobody there, do you know? Um, and everyone, by the time that Chaos Theory came on, went, I think we'll go home. We'll go home, let's all go home. <laughs> and I think about four songs in, Chaos Theory must have thought, I think it's time to go, yeah, thank you, good. See, thanks, cheers. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shame, but they, but they were pretty poor. But there you go. So there you go. I've got a couple left, but I'll stop there for just now. Okay, I'll do one. I'll do one before I get to the big finale. Yeah. Um, as you as you chaps might be aware, last summer I went to um, Cyprus. I went to Paphos in Cyprus. Yes, and. Um, with the the UK hadn't opened up at this point in any any meaningful sense, and um, excitingly there were some boys with actual bands on. Yeah, so mm. um, we went to see this band. I cannot remember for the life of me what they were called. They were probably called We Are Shit or something <laughs> like that because they were they were resolutely bad. But I've been dying to tell somebody and see if anybody can make any sense of this right so they played in they played inside it was basically a pub and we sat outside so the the bass, bass player's guitar bass, well, the bass player's bass is coming you know the it's coming th coming through the window so he's playing through the window like that yes. a bit, bit, bit like mike king from uh, level 42 right so so he can't rock yeah he can't rock that far otherwise he's going to smash smash his stock into the into the into the frame of the window so so far so weird so um they, they, you know they, they, they did all your standard bar bar band kind of stuff you know summer of 69 um all the small things you know that's an interest interesting segue some bon jovi right but then and, I, I have asked one of my friends who's in a cover band. I, I said, they, they did. They started off um, with the green, green grass of home. Wow. Okay. Right. Which segued seamlessly into Creep by Radiohead. What? <laughs> I mean, I say seamlessly. <laughs> you know, they're kind of. We're just going this trip. I've never seen anything like it. And I thought, you know, I don't see that many other ones. You know, is that a thing? I mean, is that a thing? Is that something that's musically possible? Because let me tell you, they did it. That I shit you not, Green Green Grass of Home, into Creep. I mean, to be fair, I don't think you have many Radiohead bootlegs. They're probably famous for doing exactly that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Could not drink up quick enough and go to bed. And do you know what? They were on the phone with me and Mrs. Simon wouldn't let me go again. Oh, come on. She was so right. <laughs> she, was, she was so right but yeah that was my first like live musical experience for a best part of a couple of years wow. I'm sat there going 
what the what the fuck am I drinking? What is this uh, really weak Mediterranean? Uh, Someone spiked uh, your beer, man. Really? They did do that, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Dying to ask people if that's a thing. Tom Jones slash no. radio, and it's not. Okay. No, it's really not. It's really not. If, no. If you know it is, in the comments below. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Weird as segues. Weird as cover versions that go <laughs> together. Yeah. That's, I'm. I'm up for that. That'll be interesting. Okay. Well, I've got two left. I'll do them both so that you can have your big finish. Thank you. All right. There you go. So, the ticket for this one. There we go. Okay. Is the British Grand Prix. Oh. Okay. So this is the British Grand Prix from. Wow. I need my specs now. I can't remember. 2016. That's why there's a big 60 in the corner. Look, look at that scene. Not much getting <clears> back <throat> here. <you>. Absolutely. <laughs> so, as after the race or after qualifying or the practice day or whatever, to keep people in and spending money on the squeezy cups of alcohol, they put some bands on. So, one of the nights we were lucky enough to witness scouting for girls as we left, because they, 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 they piped up and we thought, oh, run. Run. <laughs> keep on going, absolutely keep on going. Um, but then I like the feeling. If anyone knows who the feeling are, I really like the feeling. That is, to me, a massively underrated pop rock band whose debut album was like Super Trump Resurrected in a modern twist. Okay, they've not been quite so consistent since. So they headlined on race day. So you get interviews with all the drivers and all these kind of things on stage with people like Damon Hill and ex-champions coming out and going, hey, and getting the crowd up with things. It was really good fun. But prior to the feeling coming on, we were treated to... Now, I have to be careful how I say this because you might misunderstand what I mean, but then you also might understand what I mean because the, I, we saw the Sex Pistols. Okay, but no, we saw the Sex Piss dolls oh. i've seen them okay so it's a female sex pistols covers band now i don't actually like the sex pistols i'm really sorry i know there's people that, that love their punk the sex pistols never really did anything for me whatsoever my brother who was the guy standing here at the time massive fan of the sex pistols he really enjoyed them oh wow it was a terrible experience for me it was just <laughs> excruciatingly bad yeah i would you know Oh, to have songs that I loathe, utterly loathe, covered by a band whose whole shtick, the whole act was to be that band, but playing at a ginormous event. <sighs> so there you go. So that that was worth mentioning. And then the last one you've already mentioned, Simon, not as a, not as someone you've seen, but as a figure of ridicule. Okay, and along in the same lines as Peter, I'm a good parent. Okay, I was an unintentionally good parent because in the age of ticket touts there are many things when you go to really big concerts that they put in place the unsuspecting arseholes like me don't pay enough attention to before they buy the tickets okay so if you bought a ticket for this ginormous show at Hamden Park in Glasgow okay so the national stadium where the football team plays, which is utterly inaccessible by anything other than, I don't know, plane, okay? <laughs> I mean, to leave it afterwards, you have to basically walk for weeks or stand in a queue for a taxi for twice as long, all right? So we did both. We walked for 45 minutes and then queued for a taxi. <sighs> okay, but to buy the tickets, the person who had used their credit card had to be there in person with proof of ID and the card. So therefore, I have had the pleasure of seeing Ed Sheeran, okay? Yeah, okay, at the biggest venue in Scotland, who was supported by a then unknown, who is now really known, Anne-Marie. Okay, I mean, it's a bill from hell, okay? I mean, at least she was energetic that'd be the best way of putting it but to actually see Ed Sheeran just standing there going for the best part of two hours and what really struck me and it also wasn't bloody cheap I mean 
all in because, I mean, it's £75, but that's before, you know, postage, packaging, commission, gold plating, carrier pigeon, and all the things that happen. Okay, so £75 plus all that. Yes. Okay, there's a lot of tickets here. We, we all went, as a family, we all had this day out, okay? All of us, for a lot of money, okay? And it was definitely more money than I anticipated because I was there, and I had no intention of going. But only when I realised that I'd actually bought all of these, and I don't actually know where my was, right? That I have to go and buy another one so that they could all go because I had to be there. <laughs> right? But what really struck me... <laughs> was the fact that Mr. Sheeran, okay, the world's most overrated current music act, and I don't say that lightly, okay, he knew there was people like me there. He actually, you know, apologised to the fathers that were there with daughters, <laughs> right, who were utterly bored by the whole event. He was aware of the fact that at least half of his gold-paying audience didn't want to be there. Yeah. I mean, that's the best business model I can possibly imagine. Do you know, how do you manage to play stadiums? Make sure that half your audience don't actually want to be there. They just have to buy the bloody tickets. And count those receipts at the end of the show, right? Like, ah, we did pretty well tonight. And on the bright side, on the bright side, it bloody well rained as well, really hard. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. That's me. <laughs> uh, I really do. Good, man. You're, um, better, I was, you're a better man uh, than me. Woo. <laughs> we once stayed at a hotel um, which is vaguely near Round Air Park in Leeds and Ed Sheeran was on that night and you know trying to get to sleep and the fucker's still playing <laughs> well yeah it wasn't shot it wasn't shot I mean he had the good grace to bore people like me for about two hours two and a half hours a lifetime I'm still there in my head in my head I'm still stood there <laughs> with all my kids going it was quite good actually wasn't it dad <laughs> You didn't enjoy that, did you? No, not really. It's not my favourite thing. I feel like I have a, a story of equal terribleness. <laughs> so in, in either 2006 or 2007, not sure which, because I've tried to blank the entire situation out of my mind, um, we went to um, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> right. It was, without doubt, the worst two weeks of my life. Yeah. And both my parents are dead. Yeah. So I've been through bad shit in my life, but this was the worst two weeks of my entire existence. You're probably wondering why, why aren't you? Thanks for asking. You know, the least worst thing about it was when the when the actual shit came came through the hot through the hotel down onto the beach. That that wasn't too bad. That wasn't as bad as this musical monstrosity that I'm about to talk you through. Yeah, this, are you ready? Okay, so there's there's absolutely fuck all there. There's nothing in the the resort is completely dead. Yeah, there's n there's quite literally nothing there. So first day we're lounging around and then we thought. What's that noise? And we can hear music coming from the uh, music square kind of thing, or the big hotel across the street or something. Well, I've heard that song. What, 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 what's going on? Oh, that's weird. That, that's, that's quite a well-known song. Why are they playing for hours? What's going on? And then it stops. So, oh, that, was, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, we went out into the square where nobody existed later in the night. And they're on again. That, that, that music comes up again. Fuck, what is it? Turns out it's 1970s hit makers. Boney M. Boney M. Boney oh, M. Ra Ra Rasputin. Rasputin. That Boney M. <laughs> now, so far, so bad, right? But, oh yes, the motherfuckers did their um, sound check. Every single day. <laughs> and they played. <laughs> every single <laughs> night. <laughs> Twice a day. The entire Boney M. 
catalog. Which is massive. <laughs> oh, would you like me to tell you how they padded it out? Because I'm going to tell you, even if you don't want to. Yes. So they played all the hits, you know, hits. And it actually was Liz Mitchell's Boney M. She's the, the one that actually sings on the uh, on the records, yeah? Um, let me tell you how she padded it out. Because actually one night we actually went and sat on the big chairs and watched. She dragged out not one grandchild, but approximately 38 fucking grandchildren. This is Marlon. This is Derek. This is Algernon. Not in the middle of um, Mary's boy child. I mean, how fucking weird was that in Egypt? <laughs> Doesn't look Christmassy at all, I'm just saying. No, but no, in an absolutely interminable cover of No Woman, No Cry. Well, let me tell you. Simon was crying every fucking day. Just an absolute horrific nightmare. Just the worst thing I've ever encountered. Every every afternoon, every night, Oof. a good hour and a bit, twice a day, every day. Only I, I am so impressed at the level of professionalism of that band, Simon. I don't know how you can criticise. That is dedication to their really? craft. Really? You know, they don't want to disappoint the fans that have turned up to see them every night for two weeks and be introduced to the entire family tree by, you know, not being able to perform Ra, Ra, Rasputin, okay? So I, I don't know why you could possibly think that that's a bad thing. How could you think that's a bad thing? And how nice would it be there all week? They figure, well, there's so much to do here at the resort. People are going to be busy all hours a day, so we'll play all day long, every day. And hopefully you'll catch us at least once, right? When she said we'll be all week, she certainly meant it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, torture. They must, have, they must have had a budget of like 500 bucks for, for music that whole, that whole week. And they figure, well... <laughs> We haven't played live in months. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the gig. Sure. <laughs> Nightmare. Just absolute horrific. War tour. Oh, that is terrible. <laughs> wow. I win. Thank you. I think I think you win. I think you win. Yes, absolutely. Suddenly, Ed Sheeran feels like a good night out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have any stories like that. Those are both great. Jesus. Oh, my God. Do you know what you do, do uh, Peter, don't you? What's that? You have some homework. Yeah, I have some homework. Would you like to talk us through it? Uh, sure. So I, what's, what's the name of the band again? <laughs> that was not the most convincing shoot I've ever had. No, I, well, because I, I, I listened to the music. I, I don't remember the name of the band. It's got this really long name. I'm like, I just, all I know is I like what I heard. Um, the band that does the, crick, the cricket stuff, the cricket album or whatever, right? So, really good. You know, the cricket. No, Duckworth Lewis, Duckworth Lewis Method. There you go. Even yes. if people who know what they're called, it's not that easy to see. Yeah, yeah. no, it's not. That's but uh, I so I listened to a whole bunch of their songs, and I was amazed at how much I liked it because I've never heard these guys ever before. And it's obvious, and they do like some interesting covers. Obviously, these guys love the Electric Light Orchestra and possibly 10 CC because that's what I hear when I'm. It's it's whimsical, it's melodic. There's nice instrumentation there. And really, really catchy. And I was I was generally impressed. I don't know whether I would go out and buy this stuff. I might, because I liked it quite a bit. And I, I listened to like 10 of their songs. And uh, all of them were really, really good. And the ELO cover was great. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. I was, I was glad to go down that little mini rabbit hole for uh, you know a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, over here, I've, I've never heard of them. Never heard of them before. But good. I, what would you classify that? I mean, it's pop, obviously, but it's kind of art rocky sort of in spots it's definitely they, they call themselves cricket pop don't they so cricket pop? <laughs> just how much more obtuse could you possibly get i know right yeah yeah really good I, mean, I suppose they're, they're cricket pop in the same way that ailstorm or pirate metal do you know it's all based around a thing the difference is that one is executed really really smoothly and I used the word quaint, Simon, maybe took slight exception to that, because I didn't, I kind of mean quaint more in the sense that it's just so, well, quaint, but it's not quaint, it's not, you know. I thought it was kind of charming. Yeah, charming. I like your it's, 
you know, I, I just found the music, you know, what's not to like about it, right? You yeah. know, obviously it's not. The music's excellent. Yeah. I must admit, I got totally wrapped up in the lyrics because I do, I'm not famous for liking things that are what I would call quirky. See when things are like wacky. I'm not really into wacky music. I don't like comedy for the sake of it. Yeah, this but when a band can take a topic that's got absolutely zero to do with the music and make it sound like it's got everything to do with what they're about as they play their songs, I'm in. I'm totally in. And that's exactly what they are they are all about. They they take a subject that is just preposterous, ridiculous, nonsense. You can't write a concept album about cricket. <laughs> well, yes, you can. And they have, and they did, Twice. and it's really, really good. Yeah. I mean, I don't, and I, I, I don't, you know, I'm listening to this stuff, and I don't give a shit what they're singing about because I'm not a lyric guy, so I'm just like, ah, whatever. They could be singing about going to the moon. I don't care. But the songs are pleasing to listen to, and they're fun. And that's all I cared about. Yeah, I'm not a lyric guy, but they made me listen to lyrics because they are really well thought out. I also don't know jack shit about cricket, so there you have that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not convinced to ever travel outside of. Yeah. Well, maybe seven or eight markets, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, if they did, if they did a concept album on how to make pizza or something like that, I would be totally all in. But, you know, cricket. Anyway, so I... I, I, I listen, I like <laughs> you're it. in charge. You just <laughs> uh, so there you, there you have it, everybody. Um <laughs> Please make it stop. Please make it stop, right? Yeah, so I guess <laughs> in the comments below, uh, everybody feel free to tell some of your stories of concerts or events you've been to where when you tell someone about it, they're like, huh? You know, the big question mark comes up. And like, you saw who? Or you saw what? Or you saw where? That sort of thing. So that's what this was all about. And uh, it's all about storytelling. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We are on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all together all the damn time. All the damn time. Yes. See? I told you I'd, get, I'd throw that in there right at the end. <laughs> throw it in. No? no? I'll do it straight next time. All right. Just for you, Simon. All right, cool. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you again next Saturday with uh, more shenanigans here for Simon Bray and Steve Reed. I am Pete Pardo. Have a good rest of the weekend, everybody. Stay tuned tomorrow for album homework assignment because this guy will be back once again going up against Neve the Prog Nerd, the show you've been waiting for for all these weeks. It's happening. So uh, stay tuned tomorrow for that. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.